Keď sa... Go. Okay. Welcome, painting students. We are going to have a demonstration here today of project for this week. We're going to do two small paintings. We're going to do a monochromatic using burnt umber and white. So when you set up your palette, you need to get um, six stages of value, white and burnt umber, and the four middle tones mixed for your palette. And then I have actually a complete palette here because in addition to a monochromatic painting, we're also going to do what's called a broken color impasto painting on on this uh this this uh, surface over here the surface we're using you can see my reference images here you might be working from your phone or some other device but i printed out my reference images ahead of time um materials you need at this point you need your full palette this is the super extreme turbo full palette uh, we've never really set up a palette this way in class but this is how you can set up to work this time if you want to do the uh monochromatic uh, painting one at one time and the color painting at another that's fine uh, but this is uh, how I'm going to set up my palette so I can walk through both of them really quickly the uh, materials you need you need some brushes I'm using these synthetic hair brushes the dark handle brushes from the brush pack that we got uh, you need a pencil I went ahead and sketched in my images uh, just lightly I put images in already so that I uh, would would be able to kind of work uh, quickly as I'm explaining what's going on to you. You need a rag, you need a tape. I, I just got an old piece of cardboard here and tape, put my palette paper on that and that'll work fine for my palette. And it's very important to note, I'm trying to work exactly as you might be working. And in this case, if you're not using a nine by 12 palette, what I've done here, for those of you who don't have those, is just tape down a piece of eight and a half by 11 inch typing paper and if you're using paper you just got to be sure you tape down all four sides and leave it taped down until it dries out after you paint it because if you don't the paper will get buckled and, and there won't be a, a good level of craftsmanship there i got a container of water here i'm just going to go ahead and put my brushes in there to start out with and then i got a spray bottle you know you got to spray your palette and keep it uh, moist uh, not don't let it dry out while you're working I'm going to start out with a monochromatic painting. I'm going to do that up top. I'll let you see my reference image here. I went out and took a, a photo of a nice uh, lily flower out in the yard. And uh, that's really what I want you to do. Find something in your yard or uh, a flower in your house or um, some type of botanical plant or flower that you can use as the reference for this painting. Also, I want you to note cropping that you need the whatever you're photographing to extend off of all four sides. So it extends off the bottom here, the left side there, right side here, and the top up here. That, that make, gives us a little bit more of an activated composition, and that's something I want you to think about as you set up your photograph for this. You're going to zoom in and crop the flower off the different sides. That gives us, like I said, a little more interesting composition. For the top one, I went ahead and made a black and white version of the image so that I can just look at value. That's what the monochromatic painting is all about. Um, but this approach is going to differ from some of what we've done previously because in this case um, we're going to leave our brush marks there. You don't have to, to, to blend and make sure everything's real smooth. We're going to, we're going to allow our brush marks to, to stay and that gives us a little more of what you might call a painterly finish or or um, just your your mark making can can remain. So I'm going to start up here. There's a really dark shape um, I see in my reference here, and I'm just going to kind of paint that in. I'm using the sketch that I did early on as a as a guide, but I'm just kind of really going to quickly chunk my darkest tone in there. And really, our strategy as we're working on the monochromatic would be kind of put your put your darkest tones in, figure out where your darkest tones are and then figure out where your lightest tones might be and then you can kind of work in between those two in, in the middle tone. So I'm using this brush, the shape of the brush, uh, to feed it into little areas where I might need a little detail where these shapes come together. The nice thing about this approach to painting, it's loose 
and I can come back over these areas and cover them up uh, whenever I need. There are some details of something in the background up here and I can come and put that in later on as I need. We're working here with thick paint. Okay, so we're not using thin paint. Part of the, the reality of what we're dealing with is paper and the paper, uh, it does respond to moisture. It could, could weaken it up a little bit. So if we use this thicker paint, it'll do less absorbing into the, into the paper and will not get damaged or anything along the way. This is a pretty dark area. There's several dark areas down here. I'll just kind of mask those in real fast. This stem right here is pretty dark through this area. Uh, some dark kind of below here and over here. The darkest paint is actually the most uh, transparent one that we have, so it's actually going to go on. And it really needs to be thick in order to be dark, and we'll probably have to go back and paint over in some of these areas to get our, our dark tones down. Uh, so I'm going to focus on the darkest tones. I'm also going to give some focus to the lightest tones. Where do those need to be? And I'll kind of start chunking those in. I'm going to save the white paint for the very end just to add little highlights uh, that I need as I finish. But I know this uh, this part of this flower here is kind of a, a lighter tone. And so I'm going to start to chunk some of that shape in. The little edges of the flowers have nice little contours and you can see they're kind of way they're kind of wavy contours and you can go ahead and take advantage of this looser style and and uh, get some of those things in there there's a pretty light value uh, happening down here and on the tip of that little cut stem i can see there on the on the side of this this shape up here there's a pretty much of a lighter tone in this little petal that reaches up here also has kind of a lighter value so we're not we're not working here in a way that we're going to wind up blending the paint we're going to uh, just put different uh, aspects of the the value shapes and things down and then um, add other shapes and things beside them There's some light tone here I mean uh, some of the areas of the paint might blend I'm going to use more of a a middle tone at this point and try to chunk in some of the the other middle tone shapes here this underneath this thing has kind of a middle tone to it the sides of this maybe that stem there this is kind of my uh, sec third darkest middle tone I'm gonna work with here I'll chunk a little bit of that in there this side of this flower actually gets pretty pretty dark there and it's darker than and the what's what's near it so I'm actually gonna so we're getting the shapes here mapped in underneath this this petal here is a fairly dark dark value these flower petals are in fact translucent so some of the light the way the light plays out on them is um, It's pretty interesting because the, the um, so uh, that's really kind of dark for that area, but that's okay with this approach. We can go back in and just put a lighter tone, and I'll mix with the brush sometimes. We can kind of put a lighter tone here to make up for that dark that doesn't really necessarily need to be there. We can get make a little bit of a lighter tone. We can apply some of that up here also for this. Uh, pull some of that lighter tone right there and you don't have to mix things together you can leave this thing uh, as kind of a broken broken color palette I'll add a little bit of a lighter tone up here the thing bends over a little bit there if there's little stands of paint that's called impasto that's texture and that's just fine for this that impasto texture um, middle tone back here it's really should be a darker middle tone sometimes I'll work back over these areas as I try to get them all figured out sometimes we mix paints right there on the 
on the painting itself with this approach. And I know we got some darker area up there and then some lighter areas that kind of feed in up there. Don't have to necessarily blend that, it just is what it is. I'm run a lighter tone along this petal which kind of sits behind here at the top and then put more of a, a darker middle tone here to get it to contrast with what's behind it. Um, our background tones back here, we want them to contrast with whatever they're up against. There's some, some patterns and things back there that we're going to need to eventually um, try to mimic a little bit, but at this point we're okay just to kind of chunk in this. It looks like it's a little darker. Right as that stem, top of that stem right there stands out. And this petal too. It's kind of the stem. Apparently the stem got cut off right here. Oh, that's not that's the same value. It's darker. Let's see here. I'm going to get a darker tone here. And it's okay to build this thing with imperfect brush marks and paints that appear to kind of run into each other a little bit. This is a different approach. We're loosening up. It's going to be darker down here. brushes off for too long. The edge of this petal right here lightens up. And uh, this one is really light up here too. I'm going to add a little more white in some of these areas that need to be reiterated in terms of their light values. This petal sits in front of that one. Or it actually curves over. And then it's much darker on the bottom. Let me re. So it gets really dark here on the bottom of this petal as then it turns up. As it goes up, make more of a middle tone under here. So things get maybe a little confused after a while we'll go back and try to sort it out this is a middle tone petal right here up in the corner and we work fast here we don't try to overthink it we're just trying to figure out generally what values we can use to make these areas uh, mimic what, what's what's near them. Kind of a darker, something of a middle tone back here. We can clean up that line so it looks more like a shape of a petal. At some point, we need to kind of make sure we got the whole thing uh, essentially covered with paint, and then go back and start refining what we got. Some of these areas over here obviously are quite a bit darker and there's some patterns and things that are going on back here too that are making that happen. Some different shapes and things going on back there that we can just kind of indicate with a little bit of pattern. Uh, this side of this little petal here is going to be a little lighter and over here it's going to be a little darker on the other side of it. So we got kind of a a quickly uh, placed in uh, value study at this point. Here's the stem for that. Thing goes up there. Okay, 
So we got kind of a quickly placed in. I, I want to maybe try to get things a little more organized uh, moving forward. And so I'm going to start to look. I know I need to probably darken up this area looking at my reference. So I'm going to get a little, a little more dark paint here. Try to get this area a little more dark. The dark doesn't go all the way down to the to the bottom, but it does run up against that petal there. So we're going to get that a little more figured out. The values that run along the edge of this thing and even underneath it are pretty important. Let me see if I can't get this to be a little darker underneath there. Mm -hmm. It goes all the way down to that pedal. Try to clean it up a little bit. And let's see, get back to this brush. Put just a lighter tone here. And work back into this particular pedal here. of this pedal really comes forward so we're going to give a lot of contrast right there if you remember our tools for using value contrast having a, a light against a dark in this case really will give us a little bit more illusionistic you know, punch brush marks are still kind of just standing out but I'm really looking for the areas where these things get really get much lighter looking for value shapes on this but it doesn't have to get real real uh tense uh, you know you don't have to get everything just exactly right on this uh stem down here it's pretty dark um I'm just gonna run that dark tone all the way up to that leaf Trying to get a dark tone right there, right underneath that that leaf, so it will stand out. We got to work into this. Uh, there's one petal here. Operating a little different than what's near it. There's a darker petal underneath there. But we're really kind of sneaking up on forms, trying to make this impression of the flower that we're looking at. Moving from general to specific, kind of, I would have just been blocking in general shapes. And now I'm going to trying to get a little more specific about the shapes that I'm interpreting here. I'm going to reassert my dark background tones. Put down a nice another layer. Like I said, the darkest paint that you have is also the most transparent. So a lot of times you will need a second layer to get it to work out just right. And we should be creeping up on a little more suggestion of this uh, the value study of this particular set of flowers.
clean up a couple of small brushes and start to work a little bit more on specific areas that I might want to refine. This particular flower here really bends and twists and uh, winds up being a pretty complicated form, but we can we can narrow it down uh, the more we keep working with it and the shapes it needs to needs to have to define it. But it is time, you gotta spend some time working with these things and and, and uh, approaching the challenge here of the uh, the representation of these forms. Uh, they don't usually come come together just right away. This part of the leaf right here really catches the light. So we're hitting it with more and more. And I'm letting some of my brush marks you now kind of reflect the kind of the, the way this leaf kind of bends and, and moves. Uh, the brush marks stay, but um, but we're going to start to let them maybe have more function in terms of uh, the shape of things, the structure. I'm trying to find a round. There we go. The round brushes are the ones that give you the point. And uh, at this point, where this is a darker, darker part of the leaf here and it does kind of have these shapes that extend out and even has some these little veins and things we might give them some um, little moments here This thing keeps asking to be worked on a little bit. Again, contrast is a big, a big part of the game for us, and so you know, really emphasizing that that particular leaf and how it kind of folds over out and. Towards us there is, is a is a great little moment uh, that we can take advantage of with contrast. And this is really the underside of that leaf. We could connect that a little bit. And then the darkest part really needs to be up on the front. This leaf kind of hiding back behind the other leaf there. Let's darken it up just a bit. Again, contrast, creating just some value contrast there. Again, trying to slightly mimic the, what's going on with that leaf. Um, I'm using a little bit of lighter color here. A little bit of blending going on there, trying to make it fade into the back. Again, it doesn't have to be real, real smooth, but if it seems to be what that particular leaf needed. Um, back here we have like a real, a lot of pattern to the, to the background area there and it's hard to, uh, to do that real subtly. We don't want a pattern like this, the way it looks right now, because that would, um, that would just be distracting. If we take our, our, one of our flat brushes, these kind of rectangular brushes, we might be able to drag it around and knock down some of that texture um, from the background. Did lose a bit of our contrast there. But it's kind of foggy back there anyway, so not, not too much trouble. We can do that type of thing again. Let's 
try to obliterate it over time. This is not a... Again, all these shapes and patterns back here, they're all broken up and... and uh, So we just wind up kind of trying to suggest that they're back there. But a little bit of a, an interpretation game there. Maybe I'll pull some of these things together a little bit. We need to uh, solidify this, uh, this stem here. Darkest color is not on this side. Darkest colors are actually happening on this side. A little bit run through the middle of that area. The other uh, textures run into it. We'll kind of run these back in that direction. Maybe pull them into each other a little bit. Sometimes things happen accidentally that are better than what you planned. Bottom edge of this leaf is bright. out part of the section of that leaf and we'll amplify that this little thing right here has a particularly light value and we're we're getting there and we can we can finish this one out knock this back just a little bit Some of those under little marks that we made will stay there, and we're getting getting there close closer than we were. I don't think this one is all so so bright. We're gonna push it back just a bit. It's got definitely a darker little moment where the over a little bit and we're going to brighten it up oh, that is too bright. grab a little bit of this here and we'll kind of do that thing where we let the textures kind of reach around We're doing a lot of mixing of the paint right here on the on the painting itself. So this area here is a little bit lighter. And we'll stop with this for now because we do need to get to the um, the color study. Actually, I'm going to do one more thing, which I think might make this stem pop out just a little bit more. There's some dark value. I believe on the other side here that help it uh, get asserted there. A little bit of a turn here that runs right along the bottom of that leaf there. Okay, so we. You can see we've done we've done some job here of uh, interpreting that flower, and uh, we'll just uh, leave it at that for now. I might come back to it and uh, make some adjustments. It, it, certainly, it's a rapid process. You're moving fast, and 
the reality of getting everything organized just right is uh, it, it's a challenge that unfolds over time. As a matter of fact, the more I look at it, the more things I see right now, I definitely want this little part of the leaf to lighten up here. It stands stands up against the you know, it's this thing kind of rounds over. But anyways, we're, we'll leave it at this point so that we can uh, can move on to the color version. And you see how the uh, okay, yeah, you can see it's got a little 